So now I go to the second part of my talk, which is about scalable multiple description quantization. In the start of my presentation, I have shown uh, this uh, slide, this uh, sh small description of MDC, but I did not explain how the descriptions were actually created. And in literature, one of the foremost methods of uh, creating these descriptions is known as multiple description scalar quantization, or MDSQ. And MDSQ consists of two coarse quantizers, Q1 and Q2, which reconstruct the signal at distortion D1 and D2. These are the side quantizer, and they induce a fine central quantizer, Q0, which reconstruct the signal at a distortion D0. Now how the descriptions are created, we take our original signal and we quantize it with Q1 and we produce an acceptable quality uh, reconstruction. Again, we take the signal and, and quantize it with Q2 and we again, another acceptable quality description. And since these are mutually refinable and they can refine to reach this Q0, we can combine these two descriptions or indices coming from these two quantizers to, quanti to uh, do inverse quantization with our Q0, the central quantizer, and we can produce the uh, high uh, quality uh, joint reconstruction. Yeah. Here in this slide, I would like you to look at MDSQ from a different perspective. Here I have shown the partition cells, uh, which I showed uh, in the last uh, slide. And actually you can view MDSQ uh, as uh, this central quantizer uh, together. Uh, you can view MDSQ uh, with Q0 and the associated index assignment matrix. And in this case, index assignment matrix is shown in here, where it has 11 entries, which are actually the 11 entries of this Q0 quantizer. They are arranged along the two diagonals of this index assignment matrix in such a fashion that the quantization cells of Q1 are actually the union of quantization cells of Q0 along the rows of this index assignment matrix. You see? Again. This is the third cell. And the quantization cell of Q2 are actually the union of quantization cell of Q0, but along the columns of this index assignment matrix. Yeah? Again. Here I have shown another example where there are three diagonals, and the now the central uh, entries are 16. So our central quantizer is much more finer. See, compared to there where uh, you have 11 uh, cells. And you see that here, the D0 or the reconstruction of Q0 actually is, uh, has, is a better reconstruction though, so the distortion is reduced. However, we see that the Q1 and Q2 here, and Q1 and Q2 here, they have same number of cells, six in every case, you see? So the total rate, which is the sum of the rate from two uh, side description is exactly the same in uh, two description. But we have now a finer central reconstruction. But this fine reconstruction is not uh, free of cost. It comes at the cost of increasing the side distortion and, and the Q1 and Q2 here has higher distortion than Q1 and Q2 here because now, you, although you have same number of cells, but you have disjoint cells. Huh? You see? Cells are disjoint. So in general, these uh, diagonals are used to uh, vary the redundancy between the two descriptions. And here I have shown a demonstration example where in this top uh, point, you have only one diagonal in the index assignment matrix. And that this means that the two descriptions are completely redundant. So that's why the central uh, distortion and the side distortion all are exactly the same. Now you are going to increase the number of diagonals and you are going to reduce the uh, redundancy between these two descriptions. And of course, you are going to reduce the central distortion, but only at the cost of increasing the side uh, distortion. Now, this is perfect, but MDSQs have certain limitations. And these are uh, main two limitations I highlighted here. First is that they are fixed rate quantizers, so descriptions cannot be encoded or decoded in a scalable fashion. Scalable in the sense that, uh, uh, as I explained in the earlier slide, that you, as the rate improves, so as the rate uh, increases, you reduce the uh, distortion. And the second limitation is that they give limited control of uh, the redundancy between the two descriptions. And I explain here, uh, in this case here, that the diagonals are used to uh, change the redundancy. And the total number of redundancy points are only limited to the total number of uh, uh, potential uh, diagonals that you can use here in this index assignment uh, matrix. So what is the solution? The solution is go to the scalable extension of uh, these MDSQs, known as scalable MDSQs. Now this word scalable suggests that we need to have embedded quantization cells as the one uh, I have explained right in the start of my presentation. But here it is more challenging because we have three quantizers. 
we have two side quantizers and we have a central quantizer and all of them need to be embedded. So this embeddedness can be incorporated by doing this, the splitting of this index assignment matrix in an embedded fashion. And here I have shown an example and this is the first level of splitting which create two cells of two side quantizers and the three cells of the central quantizer. And if we keep these thresholds intact and we do a further level of splitting, uh, embedded splitting, we can go to one uh, more final level. We could have uh, increased the number of levels if we would have started from a bigger index assignment matrix, but that's, that's just uh, intuitive. And it can be easily created by picking up a uh, bigger index assignment matrix and again splitting uh, it in an embedded uh, fashion, yeah? in the, on, a, on exactly the same way. Now, since the descriptions now can be received on different num different amount of rate from these two descriptions, the the uh, scalable MDSQ have a rate distortion function that is actually a rate distortion surface, the one as I have shown in here. Now, the problem with the existing design is that the scalable MDSQs that exist in the literature they don't produce perfectly symmetric uh, source uh, rate distortion surface. And you see, symmetric means that the behavior on one side is not exactly the same as the behavior on the other side. And this is going to uh, create us some problems because uh, this kind of uh, uh, distortion rate surface only lead to a suboptimal transmission design. And why it leads us to a suboptimal transmission design? Because this kind of a rate distortion surface only help us produce descriptions that are roughly balanced or sometimes highly unbalanced. Now, balance in the sense that if the descriptions are sent at the same rate, they should be, uh, they should contribute exactly equally towards lowering the source distortion. And imagine a scenario that where you have to uh, transmit this uh, source on two different channels, where they have, where there are different amount of packet loss happening on these two channels, but you don't know it at the encoder side. If you are going to send unbalanced descriptions, you might end up in a situation where you send more important information on the bad channel. Uh, and, and this is this is going to create a problem because you have more important information on uh, on your description and you are going to send it on the bad channel and this is a suboptimal transmission design so it is very very important to have perfectly balanced descriptions and that would uh, in turn demand that you need to have perfectly symmetric uh, source distortion rate surface so this motivated us to design a new family a novel family of uh, scalable mdsqs known as we named it symmetric scalable mdsqs or ssmdsqs and i have shown few instances of this family here uh, with a different number of uh, diagonals and the great thing about this family is that it is going to give us always perfectly balanced source uh, distortion rate surface now that in turn would mean that with this family of quantizer, we can create perfectly balanced source description and we don't have this uh, uh, suboptimal transmission situation that we have uh, with asymmetric quantizer as I explained in the previous slide. Now in this uh, slide, I have uh, compared the performance of uh, my family of quantizer against the asymmetric quantizer, which are the best known uh, in the literature. Uh, and I have plotted two uh, curves, two plots here. Uh, and the central distortion is plotted against the side distortion in the first channel, central distortion versus the side distortion in the second channel. And green one is the proposed family of quantizers that uh, we propose, and the red one are the asymmetric quantizers best known in the literature. Now, the best quantizer will be the one that is as close as possible to this theoretical limit. And we see that since our family of quantizers is perfectly symmetric, this green curve in two plots is exactly the same. However, this red curve here, it performs very good on this uh, description, but it performs very bad on uh, this description. Actually, I would like to highlight this point, which uh, uh, in, in a multiple description coding, a commonly known uh, rule is that the description should increase in the side distortion smoothly uh, as we uh, uh, reduce the uh, redundancy. But here we see that it is not uh, increasing smoothly, but it jumps and it uh, reduces. So this is an uh, extraordinary point. And on average, this is this plot is the average of uh, uh, these two uh, previously shown plots. And you see that here we can outperform this asymmetric family, not for this extraordinary point, as I explained, which don't follow the commonly understood uh, multiple description coding uh, rule. Now, with this, we have come to the conclusion that we have better distortion rate performance with our family of quantizer, and yet we can generate perfectly balanced source descriptions, and we don't have this suboptimal transmission situation that we have with uh, asymmetric quantizers.
Now, by now, I have shown you these scalable MDSQs uh, on which these thresholds and the reconstruction values are put in an ad hoc fashion. So, a, quest a normal question is that can we do better than that? And of course, we can do better than that if we optimize these thresholds and these reconstruction points to the statistical uh, nature of the source. And we have studied the literature and uh, we found out that there was no uh, optimization algorithm for scalable MDSQs, uh, although there were optimization algorithms for uh, fixed rate MDSQs, but none for scalable MDSQs. And this motivated us to propose a novel optimization framework for this kind of quantizers. And our proposed uh, framework was quite generic in the sense that it can handle both symmetric as well as asymmetric uh, scalable MDSQs, and it can be easily extended to more than two description case also. And in essence, this uh, optimization framework has two uh, functions. The first function creates optimal reconstruction for given thresholds, while the second function gives optimal thresholds for given reconstruction. And starting from some uh, initial, uh, initial condition, we have iterated between these two uh, functions. We have put some intelligent exit strategy, and we have our optimal uh, scalable MDSQs. And I would like to say that uh, this is an extension of the commonly known Lloyd Max algorithm uh, that is uh, used for optimizing uh, scalar quantizer. But here it is more challenging because here we don't have single quantizer, we have three quantizer. Moreover, each quantizer has multiple embedded levels. So we need to optimize all three uh, things and embed embedded levels in a joint fashion. So this was the main novelty of our optimization framework. In this slide, I have evaluated the performance of our family of quantizers and when uh, we do the optimization against the asymmetric quantizer of Gionet, which are the best known quantizer, asymmetric quantizer uh, available in the literature. And, and you see here is uh, the result from uh, uh, asymmetric quantizer and here is the result from our quantizer and we see that at the same rate at the same 2.1 bits per pixel we can do much better perceptually yeah we can uh, achieve much higher psnrs uh, with our uh, quantizer and we have carried out uh, the packet based transmission of uh, this lena coded image for uh, uh, packet loss uh, channels and i have shown the results here the first row is the results of the asymmetric quantizer uh, of Gionet. The second row is a quantizer that we propose, but without any optimization incorporated. And the third row is uh, our family of quantizer, but with optimization. And you see here in the first column, which is the peak signal to noise ratio, when there is no loss happening, zero uh, loss, we see that we can already do 3.8 dBs uh, better uh, compared to this asymmetric quantizer case. On top of that, we can have around 0 0.9 dB of improvement using our optimization algorithm. And now, if we carry out the transmission and the packet loss rate increases, you see that uh, in this case, the quality degrades. This is normal because now we are lo losing a lot of data in our uh, channel. But since the initial boost was given uh, by our family of quantizer and our optimization algorithm in the zero packet loss rate case, we, in all cases, we are above uh, this uh, asymmetric quantizer of uh, Gionet. Moreover, we have also tested our um, uh, quantizer in a full-blown image uh, coding system against duplicated, J duplicated JPEG 2000 system. Duplicated JPEG 2000 means that each description is created using JPEG 2000, and descriptions are completely redundant, so they cannot refine each other. Yeah? And we have compared our system against the duplicated JPEG 2000 system, and we found out that we can do 1, 1 to 2 dBs better than uh, this reference system that we have. So now I go to the conclusion of uh, my talk, and the conclusions here. Here, my PhD was in two phases. The first phase was about scalable single description quantization. And in this context, we have uh, uh, proposed a, a novel uh, analysis. We have carried out the design of uh, two uh, novel coding systems for, scal uh, for scalable compression of semi-regular meshes. And these coding systems have two main features. The first is that they have enabled a new scalability feature, the resolution scalability mode, which was not existent in the previous design. And the second is that now we can do much more, uh, so we can significantly outperform the existing designs in, uh, in terms of uh, uh, compression at the same rate. Yeah? The second phase was about scalable multiple description quantization. And again, here we have proposed a family of uh, symmetric quantizer known as symmetric scalable MDSQs. And they have, again, two main features. First is that they have perfectly balanced uh, descriptions, and we don't have the suboptimal transmission situation that I explained. And uh, second is that uh, our distortion rate performance is much more uh, enhanced or improved than uh, existing designs.
And the third and the and the second contribution in the second phase and the contribution that I like the most is uh, that now we have optimization algorithm for our scalable MDSQs. And as I said, it is the first optimization algorithm for these type of quantizers. And if we do uh, uh, the optimization with respect to the statistical nature of the source, we can actually improve uh, significantly the average signal to noise ratio. So during the course of my PhD, I have published uh, two SI index uh, journal papers. The first was IEEE transaction on signal uh, multimedia. Sorry, the second was on IEEE transaction on signal processing. I have published two book chapters, five conference paper, and one of my conference paper is still under. So now I go to the second part of my talk, which is about scalable multiple description quantization. In the start of my presentation, I have shown uh, this uh, slide, this uh, small description of MDC, but I did not.